हेलो फ्रेंड्स डॉक्टर संगीता हियर फॉर अनदर लेक्चर ऑफ डेंटल पाठशाला सो बिफोर वी गेट अहेड बिकॉज ऑफ द कोरोना वायरस कोविड 19 वायरस आई प्रे यू आई विश यू टू सेफ योर सेफ्टी इज एज इम्पॉर्टेंट एज योर पेशेंट्स सो स्टे सेफ एंड कीप रीडिंग सो टूडेज लेक्चर इज फिजियोलॉजी विच इज द ट्रांसपोर्ट अक्रॉस सेल मेम्ब्रेन will be a transportation occurs through the cell membrane so to understand the transportation better we need to understand the cell membrane first the structure of the cell membrane to understand the transportation how it occurs we need to understand the cell membrane of course everybody has studied cell membrane during their schools so let's go through a quick review so the cell membrane structure consists of phospholipid bilayer so we have bilayer two layers these are the two layers consisting of phospholipid so we have a phospholipid head this is the phospholipid heads these are the phospholipid heads now we have two layers of phospholipid imagine this is the extracellular fluid if this is the cell if this is the cell membrane and this is the intracellular fluid within the cell so this is the cell membrane the phospholipid are on the peripheries the phospholipids are on the peripheries we have two layers of phospholipid that is why we call this model a phospholipid bilayer of course we know that now the phospholipid layer for the external is different for the phospholipid layer for internal now the phospholipid layer for the external there they are of two types phosphotidyl choline phosphotidyl choline and the another one is sphingomyelin now the phospholipid for ica which is towards the ica which is towards the inner surface they are different now the phospholipid towards the icfs are phosphotidyl ethanolamine and the phosphotidyl serine now the phospholipid of the outer layer and the inner layer are different now we have the phospholipid bilayer with the fatty acids so we have fatty acids in the legs so this is the phospholipid head with the fatty acids leg phospholipid head in the fatty acid leg now these the straight one are the saturated fatty acids and with the bent legs are the unsaturated fatty acids so we have mostly we have the saturated kind of fatty acids now the cell membrane consists of 50% of the protein now protein we have see uh, the fats uh if you take a glass of water and if you draw few drops of fats in it for example you can add oil or ghee or anything if you add few drops then the 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 fat will get separated from the water base so the fat is not dissolved in the water now if a cell membrane is having a fatty acid that means only the fat is going to pass through the cell membrane easy so only the fat based are going to pass easily the small molecules of fats so are going to pass easily the big molecule or the other molecules the water soluble molecules they require or the big fat soluble molecules they require some channel they require some tunnel to pass through the cell membrane so for that we have some kind of proteins we'll be studying we have integral proteins these are the integral protein or the channel see these these are the hollow they are hollow in between consist of amino acid these are for example four chains of amino acid so five chains of amino acid and in between they have this tunnel so they are known as channels or the integral protein or the transmembrane protein from which the big fat soluble or the water soluble substances pass other other side we have so, so somewhere in the cell membrane suppose if this is a cell membrane in between somewhere the channels are tight the uh, molecules are very tightly packed so they are very tightly packed now when these channels when these uh, phospholipid bilayer is tightly packed then it's difficult for small molecules to pass through the cell membrane in that case we have some kind of receptors so receptor takes the takes the substance and release it from here now another kind of protein we have like snake like protein we have carrier proteins so what carrier protein does is they take this and release it from here now like this we have different kind of proteins we have peripheral proteins 
विच बाइंड टू द विच बाइंड टू द आउटर सर्फेस एंड देन रिलीज इट इन साइड द सेल मेम्ब्रेन सो वी हैव अ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्रोटीन्स सो द सेल मेम्ब्रेन कंसिस्ट ऑफ लिपिड्स एंड नाउ कोलेस्ट्रॉल we have cholesterol in between see can you see the uh, black dots so in between the cell membrane we have cholesterols so the cell membrane consists of mainly three components proteins which consist of 50% of the cell membrane we have lipid which consists of 47% of the cell membrane and we have carbs which consist of only 3% like the keto diet which i am on very small molecule of carbohydrate is present in the cell membrane the composition of the cell membrane now we'll be starting with the transportation how the transportation occurs through the cell membrane so let's get started <laughs> transportation across the cell membrane we'll be studying this into two parts and today's video will cover the passive transport and in the next video we'll cover the active transport and the special types of active transport the passive transport is the transportation which occur without any resistance which occurs easily which occurs the transportation which doesn't require any fuel which doesn't require any petrol any diesel anything for example if we talk about a downhill movement if a car is coming from down it doesn't require a fuel so this is a passive kind of transport and active transport is is when we are going uphill when a car is climbing the hill when a car is going uphill so this is a active kind of transport which requires energy which requires atp so active a for active and a for atp so it requires the active transport require atp and it is actually against the electrochemical gradient that is why it requires energy now the passive transport is along the electrochemical gradient so it doesn't require any energy now the passive transport is divided into three parts simple diffusion in some book it is divided into two parts the simple diffusion with the through the lipid layer and the simple diffusion through the protein layer now in the uh, video we have already studied the comp the composition of the components of the cell membrane a cell membrane has the lipid component and the protein component now the protein lipid layer the uh, simple diffusion when simple diffusion occurs through the lipid layer imagine small molecules of lipid so small molecules of lipids pass through the lipid layer now we have the simple diffusion across or through the protein layer next one is the facilitated diffusion facilitated diffusion is the kind of diffusion where we require a carrier molecule where we require a carrier protein so facilitated diffusion is also known as carrier diffusion or mediated diffusion when we require a mediator to transport across the cell membrane now we have some special kinds of passive diffusion which includes the bulk flow the filtration and the osmosis which we have already studied in our schools now the other kind of transportation is the active transport which occurs into two parts the first one is the uniport where only transportation occurs transportation occurs only of the one component which is against the electrochemical gradient which requires the energy which requires the atp so this is only the one component and the second one is the secondary active transport which is which requires the carrier protein and which involve the transportation of two substances now we have sim port and anti port as the name suggests sim means same anti means opposite so the same two uh, we are transporting the two substances now this usually is along with the sodium now sodium is transported along with the uh, another substance for example we'll be studying later on so along with the sodium if the same the substance is crossing in the same direction crossing the cell membrane in same direction as the sodium this is known as the sim port anti port means which is transportation occur in the different direction in the opposite direction to the sodium so the substance is uh, transported in the same direction is known as the sim port and anti port is when the substance is transported in the different direction now we'll read it one by one first comes the simple diffusion now this as i've i've told you the simple molecules the fat soluble molecules the lipid soluble molecules which are carbon dioxide oxygen and alcohol you can remember it as if you write alcohol alcohol 
so it is alcohol itself and co carbon dioxide and the all which is our o is oxygen so also the steroids are also transported through the simple diffusion through the lipid layer so we have carbon dioxide oxygen alcohol steroids in this video we'll be studying the various question which are asked frequently uh, related to this chapter now the simple diffusion there we and some respiratory gases also occur through the transport through the simple diffusion we have some protein channel we have integral proteins which we have discussed occur through the diff simple diffusion now there is a fixed law of diffusion if the the fixed law of diffusion is the net transport is equal to minus da which is the diffusion coefficient and delta c divided by which is the concentration gradient divided by delta x now this is our fricks law of diffusion it states it gives the idea about the diffusion how the diffusion occurs divided by delta x which is the thickness of the cell membrane now this law itself dictates everything for example if we talk about um, if we talk about emphysema now imagine we have normal alveoli these are the normal alveoli now imagine if the patient is having emphysema now in emphysema there are over inflammation of alveoli also in emphysema there is breakdown of alveolar walls so there is decrease in the surface area can you see now the surface area of this the coiled part is more this these are the normal alveoli this is the emphysema alveoli now in emphysema the alveoli are inflamed and the surface area now see the surface area of this and surface area of this the surface area of normal alveoli is more than the surface area of emphysema so the diffusion capacity so the diffusion is also decreased j is directly proportional to the surface area more the surface area more is the diffusion now in the in, in case of emphysema there is less surface area so there is less diffusion of the gases there is less diffusion of the gases as compared to the normal alveolus in case of emphysema in case of the patient having emphysema now if we talk about patients with pulmonary fibrosis or the patient with interstitial lung disease in case of pulmonary fibrosis the lung tissue get thickened and in case of stitial lung disease there is injury to lung and due to abnormal healing process there is scarring and there is thickening of the lung tissues so the delta x which is the thickness of the membrane now if the thickness of the membrane is increased for example in case of pulmonary fibrosis or in case of interstitial lung disease the j which is our diffusion it decreases so diffusion decreases diffusion of the gases in the lungs decreases during the pulmonary fibrosis process and the interstitial lung disease now coming to the facilitated diffusion facilitated diffusion is when the diffusion occurs through a carrier protein we have studied already now there is a property of stereo specificity that means there are certain carrier proteins which are specific for certain substance so certain carrier proteins they specifically they take they transport specific substances for example if we talk about glut glut is a carrier protein which transports glucose and galactose so there is a specificity of stereo specificity of carrier protein so for different different substances there are different uh, transporters for example glut for glucose and galactose for example uh, urea transporters for example kidney transporters are uta to uta1 to uta4 and we have for rbcs utb so there are different uh, carriers for different protein now we talk about the concentration gradient if we uh, plot a graph against concentration gradient and the rate of transport now the rate of transport and the concentration gradient see carrier proteins are like they are carrying the protein for example a bus it carries specific amount of specific number of people a bus which is going to haryana will take only people which are going to haryana right so a bus is carrying specific and specific number of people for example now if the bus has the capacity of 100 people now they can carry only up to 100 people what if now this is the if we grow a plot of concentration gradient again the rate of transport so imagine this is the threshold a bus can carry up to 100 people so imagine this is the 100 limit which is our threshold limit now the concentration gradient will increase the number of people will keep on increasing but at one point of time a bus one bus can carry up to 100 people if we increase the 
people up to 200 if imagine if we have 200 people and we have one bus so the number the concentration gradient will remains the same so no matter how many people we'll have this bus is going to carry only 100 people now these 100 people we will we'll have to wait and then when the bus comes back they will take again the 100 people but in case of simple diffusion more than the concentration and more is the rate of transport so we have if we have more number of concentration the rate of transport of simple diffusion is going to be exponentially increasing so this is our facilitated diffusion and this one is our simple diffusion this is the difference between both of them now coming to bulk flow the pressure bulk flow when the occurs in the pressure gradient when there is a lot of uh, transportation occurs so a lot of transportation occurs all of a sudden is known as the bulk flow filtration for example gases exchange in the lungs when the gases are exchanged in the lungs occurs in the bulk flow now coming to the filtration is against the hydrostatic pressure and the weight of the fluid for example if we talk about glomerulus of kidney the filtration occurs in the glomerulus of kidney now coming to the osmosis as we all know movement of the water now see there is a difference between diffusion and the osmosis now to make you understand the concept this is the solute concentration this is the solute concentration this is the equal amount okay this one is the amount of water now the solute concentration in this water is less and the solute concentration in this water is more so the osmosis occurs osmosis is actually the movement of the water or the movement of the solvent now if this is the water initially okay and then we have placed a semi-permeable membrane actually osmosis occurs through a semi-permeable membrane if we put a semi-permeable membrane in between so the concentration of the solute the concentration of the water it uh, increases or it moves from low concentration to high concentration so this low concentration of the solute so the movement of water from occurs from the low concentration of the solute to the high concentration of the solute so the, wherever there is high concentration of solute there will be high concentration of water so water in this where there was high concentration of solute increases so this is known as osmosis the movement of water from the low concentration of solute to the high concentration of solute is known as the osmosis. Now we have endosmosis wherein the movement of water endo means in. The movement of water is in the cell. Exosmosis is where the movement of water is outside the cell. So we have uh, osmosis. So in the next video we will cover about the active transport. So that's about the transportation of the cell membrane. We have studied the passive transport where we have studied the simple diffusion, the facilitated diffusion which occurs through the carrier protein and some special types of passive transports we have studied which is the bulk flow filtration and osmosis. So if you have any questions about the transportation across the cell membrane, leave it in the comment below. Give it a thumbs up. If you like it, make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet and I'll see you next time. Stay safe.